five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one. I'm from a place where the girls are always looking pretty. You might have heard of us. We call it Shy City. We build champions here who define gritty. We don't do excuses. We don't do pity. Rose is coming back stronger. That's a guarantee. Cutler's coming back too. He's beastly. Going into Marshall, the title's ours easily. Blackhawks are winning titles. Trophy looking massive. Don't forget about the Cubs, Sox, Crosstown Classic. With so much greatness, we gotta show bravado. You got your boys Ambro and Mike Mercado. Welcome in, friends, to a very special edition of the Chicago Beat. It is Bears Packers Week, so I thought, you know, we've been talking about it for a lot. I bet you've been seeing on Facebook, we have a certain person who lives up in the north state of us that's been throwing a couple jabs here and there, if you want to say a couple. Ladies and gentlemen, from Biggs Golf Talk and Biggs Packer Review, Big John, my friend, welcome to Enemy, enemy Territory. How are you? Uh, Dub Packers. Dub Packers. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> If I had uh, that double check and that triple check, I, I if I was the Chicago Bears fan, I'd be triple checking your your picks this week because the Packers invade over at Lambeau Field. I don't know. You guys got to drive up 94 and thinking about it at Lambeau Field. This is what it's all about, baby. Oh, down the Bears' intestinal fortitude are going to let them win 426 <laughs> to negative 4, okay? Because Coach Ditka is going to be there. Now, Big John, thank you for being on the Chicago Beat. I know, Thanks for having uh, me. Yeah, of course. I know Sundays is a busy day for you. Um, big Monday Absolutely. night game. Green Bay first in the division, Bears third. Some injuries on both sides of, uh, of town, so it's going to be very interesting to see these two teams. First thing I want to get into it is, can you give us, uh, some of the listeners over here on the Chicago side, a, a little quick review about what the Green Bay Packers are bringing into into Monday night? You know, i got to tell you, with the Green Bay Packers, we still have some questions on defense side. And, and you know, the Bears right now, if they had Jay Cutler, you know, you got to think, this is going to go back and forth as far as offense goes, and it's going to be a high offensive game, as the Packers and the Bears have proved all throughout the season. Both sides of the ball on defense have been giving up a lot of points. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not that we don't have Jay Cutler on a, you guys don't have Jay Cutler on the offensive side and we're missing Clay Matthews and you guys are missing Lance Briggs. So it's, it's even right there. I think right now on the Packers side, our concern last year was the offensive line. It's not that concern this year. Now we have a running back in Eddie Lacy that's really performing very well. And if he doesn't step up, we have a guy named by the name of Starks number 44, mm-hmm. that's willing to take his place and run the ball as well. And platooning those two guys, what Mike McCarthy's doing on the up there in Green Bay, I think is a really smart move because now defensively, you got to think about that defense where Ex- before exactly. it, it was just defending the pass. And you can actually line up a four-man front or a three-man front and still defend that run. And then you can double and triple team on your receivers. And last year, it was Jennings, it was the Donald Drivers, Jordy Nelson, Jermichael Finley. You know, we have Jermichael Finley that's hurt. He's and, out. And with Randall Cobb as well being out. And yet right. this uh, Packers team is still putting up teams. And and this is where I wanted to. I'm glad you brought up Eddie Lacy. You know, from the Chicago side, we have a guy in Matt Forte, okay, who's supposed to be a top 10 running back. Has at times not been able to perform at it. But with Eddie Lacy, it amazes me with Eddie Lacy that how big of a difference it is for a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who hasn't had a Randall Cobb, has, does not have a Jermichael Finley, who they've had injuries even on the offensive line in the beginning of the season. Eddie Lacy has kind of shown up big. What kind of impact does that mean to a Green Bay Packers team that for years, even when they won the Super Bowl, was looking for a prominent number one running back? Huge. Huge. And if you remember the, you know, that run, uh, the playoff run, we have a Starks that came into the playoffs. Really, nobody knew how to defend him because mm-hmm. – he didn't come in until late in the season, and there was no film on this, this guy. Um, and, and now, now there's film, and now there's film on both running backs. You got Eddie Lacy that you know what he can do when he bounces to the outside. He is a pretty difficult guy to defend, and you really have to. It takes multiple defenders to take this guy down, and that's what the Packers have been needing for many, many years. You know, and the losses that we've had this year haven't been by much. To open up the season, we had San Francisco again, one play away from winning that game. And a very a team that might go to the Super Bowl. I mean, we're not talking about a pushover no, team absolutely. in San Francisco. As a matter of fact, a favorite to win the West. See, so there. I mean, and and, and speaking of uh, Eddie Lacy and what it meant for him to be on there, uh, he's one of the key players I have to this matchup, uh, along with Jordy Nelson and Aaron Rodgers. Now, to me, you're looking at two defense, like you brought up earlier, two defenses that have played absolutely terrible right. uh, at this point of the season. Absolutely. I mean, just to give you an idea, the Bears' defense have allowed 29 
points a game, 273 yards passing, and 117 yards rushing. So it's kind of disheartening as a Bears fan right now, thinking you have Eddie Lacy, a rookie who's kind of been coming up in this season, a MVP Super Bowl quarterback in Aaron Rodgers, with a gaudy defense who already is banged up with the Charles Tillman and a Tim Jennings. Lance Briggs out. Julius Peppers hasn't showed up. So as a Packer fan, as part representation of the Packer Nation, you guys must be licking your chops thinking of what this defense might be bringing to you guys at Lambeau Field on Monday night. Well, you know, we've seen a game with, with with the Bengals and the Bears when they gave up all the running offense to the, to to the Giov- Bengals. Yeah, to Giovanni Bernard. You know? Okay. Now, the Packers in the past have always had that running defense. I mean, they used to stop. You know, and they were happy if they stopped Adrian Peterson right at the 90-yard mark and kept them below 100 yards. That was successful to stop at one Adrian Peterson. Okay. This year, I don't know if they actually stopped any any running backs below 100 yards. I don't have that stat in front of me. Mm-hmm. But I'll I tell you what, this has got to be the worst run defense I've ever seen the Chicago Bears have in its history of their franchise. They have always been that black and blue defense up front. What does that mean for the Packers? Come on, you have two running backs. You have Starks and you have Lacey, who now they can put that in the repertoire of their offense mm-hmm. on Monday night, tonight, okay, against the Chicago Bears. Not to mention you have a quarterback that has an arm and is going to have a quarterback rating in this game that can hit any receiver. We mm-hmm. have two rookies taking place of injured players here, and he was hitting those guys in the last game. And it, just to give a, a little perspective to the fans, Rodgers is 9-2 and two against the Bears yes. in the last 11. I mean, that is unbelievable because the big plan was when Levy Smith first came into the Bears, we got to stop the Green Bay Packers. And Mark Trussman didn't acknowledge how important it is to stop the Green Bay Packers. But as far as I'm concerned, the Bears came into the season arguably with the best receiving core in the division. As as great as, let's say, a Randall Cobb, uh, Jordy Nelson, and a James Jones with the Jermichael Finley may be, I would argue that Brandon Marshall, Alshon Jeffrey with a Martellus Bennett might be as potent as anything in the division. But without Jay Cutler... How much is what is Josh McCown really going to be able to do? Now, sure, he may be able to have the same. Mark Trust may, may be able to have the same effect on him like he did on Rich Gannon in Oakland, but Josh McCown's a backup for a reason. And Washington, as bad as Green Bay's defense may be, Washington is is no you know two thousand right. Super Bowl Ravens right. team. It's another really bad defensive <laughs> team. So RG three decided to show up in that game. Too. The one game he decides to show up to this season. Yeah. So it, you know it's it, to me it's interesting, but you have a lot of Bears fans now still trying to keep the fandom in. Well, let me add, yeah. let me just mention this too. You're before the bye week, the Chicago Bears scored forty one points mm-hmm. in your twenty twelve season. If you had forty one points in the Chicago Bears, you won that game. You won that game. Yep. Yeah. Almost any year as a with the when the Bears were at full strength on defense, when you had Julius Peppers who actually showed up. Brian Urlacher was still the Brian Urlacher role and still playing in the league. Lance Briggs was healthy. You know, Tim Jennings and, and Peanut Tillman. And for, for that matter, um, the, safety, uh, the safeties with Major Wright and Chris Conte, these guys all, all of a sudden, they, you know, degressed. And it shows maybe how important it was with Brian Urlacher calling the defense. Now, there was one equalizer to Aaron Rodgers in this league, and that was Brian Urlacher. Aaron Rodgers, even though with, with the great record he has against the Bears, Aaron Rodgers has never been a world beater against Chicago. And even in the NFC Championship game, they only put up 21 points. If it wasn't for a sprained knee by Jay Culler, you never know. It could have gone either way. Well, here, here's the thing. Let me give you uh, their depth chart for the Green Bay Packers because th- I think this is important when you talked about the right wide receivers and we're talking about the running backs. And a wide receiver is a depth chart. you got Jordy Nelson, Miles White, and Chris Harper, who who's going to see some action in this game against the Chicago Bears. And then on, also you have James Jones and... Jarrett Boykin, who Boykin has proved the last couple of games, he's got it. Yeah, and he's going to move probably to the three right now when you have uh, Jordan Nelson moving to the one and Sonny exactly. Cobbs up. So he's going to get some looks at some targets. You know, uh, for the running backs, you got Eddie Lacy, James Starks, and Jonathan Franklin. But, you know, and we both know Eddie Lacy and James Starks both are prone to, to uh, injuries. Yeah, and they, we've seen it before. last couple of years, mm-hmm. Eddie Lacy this year, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just coming off of the injury, and uh, James Stark for the last couple of years has not played a full season. Since the Super Bowl year. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that, you know, Jonathan Franklin, awesome. Let's not forget about, you know, the fullback. 
Coon. John Coon. Your little, you guys, his little, uh, your, your, Brian Brian Scalabri- guy. Yeah, your Brian Scalabrini in our, Green Bay. Our third down guy right. and a guy that you're going to want on a on a third and go on the end zone with four yards to go when he bangs right through the middle of that line. Mm-hmm. The Bears, again, is susceptible to that this year. Mm-hmm. Last year, you thought twice about wanting to run up the middle and run through that line up the it's middle. a little different, yeah. You had more of an intimidation factor with the defensive line. But and the fact that somebody like Henry Milton – isn't playing for the for the Bears right now. Corey Wooden isn't playing for the Bears right now. Uh, they're hurt on the defensive line. Julius Peppers has age. And I guess, I guess that's been the biggest thing you've seen between the Bears and the Packers. I feel like the Packers have almost evolved as time has gone on. They're almost, they're almost growing. They got young after Brett Favre, and they've kind of rebuilt this team after the Super Bowl. But then you look at the Bears right now, and where was it? There was no address to the defense. Now, that offense is very potent. I mean, like you said, how often does a Bears team score 41 points and lose a game? That doesn't happen. You're going to need to put up 41 points in Lambeau Field today. Let me tell you this, okay? The Steelers put up 23 points against the Bears. The Steelers are just atrocious this year. Yeah. Okay? The Lions put up 40 points against the Bears. The Redskins, 45 points against the Bears. The Giants, who hasn't scored... Much points, 21 points against the Bears. What does that say for the Bears' defense? It shows that the tide has turned in Chicago. For the first time ever, the offense has to carry this. And you know what? As good as the offense is, I don't know if they're good enough to score 41 points consistently. Who in the NFL, if your name is not Peyton Manning and you're playing in Denver, who else is going to put up 41 points? I don't care how good Aaron Rodgers is. I don't care how dominant Dallas or or, uh, Detroit might be with Megatron and all these different wide receivers and quarterbacks. It doesn't matter. 41 points to ask from your offense any time in the year, it's ridiculous. Now, in that, you know, with the points and everything, the spread right now is over under 50 points in the game. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going on the over on that. See, that's interesting. So we're going over 50. We're assuming then that, you know, Aaron Rodgers does what Aaron Rodgers does. But we're assuming then that Josh McCown is going to be able to somewhat perform and get the ball in the end zone with the Bears. (laughs) Let me tell you, if you allow the Redskins to score 40 points, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. I, I, I wouldn't put it past the Packers to put 45, 47 points up on that board. On a Monday night, too? On I mean, a Monday kinda, night? That kind of has that feel to it. They're going to send a statement yeah. for this divisional game. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's, and it's sad, too, because as a Bears fan, I mean, we've been planning this show for hell since August. And, and we're really hoping to be able to keep it closer than what it is right now. But it kind of has, you know, I'm a diehard Bears fan. And, you know, I'm of course I'm going to be rooting for the Bears the whole way through. We have the bet, you know, the Bears win this week. You know, you're going on on your play, uh, profile page. You're yep. making you the Bears. I'm making mine Green Bay. By way, Facebook.com slash Big John Vic, B I G G J O N V I C. Great stuff always at Sundays when, uh, Thank you. Thursday, right? When we get to hear Absolutely. the show. Yeah, and the JDS. Um, so, you know, I, to me personally, I like. I'm excited. It's always exciting. Football, Monday night, Bears, yeah. Packers. I mean, for all we know, if the Bears decide to show up and upset Green Bay and Lambeau, that may be the story of the year. But w- this season had the excitement of Jay Cutler with an offense, goes to Lambeau Field, and he proves if he's worth the big-time contract, if the Bears are finally ready to take a step, if Mark Trestman's the guy. Now, if Mark Trestman you know, leads Josh McCowan like he did Rich Gannon, they win. That changes everything in the, in, in the division. Because then all of a sudden you're thinking – well, if they could beat, if they could go into Green Bay and beat Green Bay, what makes you think they can't beat Detroit down in Chicago? I still, to this point, I don't think Detroit's as good as people want to. Sure, in Detroit, in the Motor City, Motor City, in that dome when they're loud, it's one thing. With Lance Briggs and on the Packer side defensively, with Clay Matthews both out for this game, you need the Lance Briggs in this game. You need a man of that. St- nature to close that gap up the middle and to be able to protect that middle of the field when it comes to the passing. Let me tell you something. He's going to he's gonna take apart that middle of the field. He's Absolutely. going to have Jordy Nelson run slants all game long. Him personally. Aaron Rodgers is one of the better quarterbacks that gets out of the pocket and makes, you know, I, I love it. You know, I love how, you know, we're going to, just a little bit of a, of a side note, how white players in leagues, they're <laughs> decept- deceptively athletic. Yeah. You know, I'm Hispanic, so I don't know any real Hispanic uh, running quarterbacks, but when there's like a Jay Cutler or a Aaron Rodgers, these guys run out of the court, out of the uh, out of the box and, you know, they're slinging in and they're able to make all these amazing moves and people don't want to give them credit for it. You know, Andrew Luck, they say he's yeah. deceptively fa- the guy's 6-5 and huge. And that's what the Bears if the Bears are having a hard time keeping somebody like uh Alfred Morris in check, what makes you think that Aaron Rodgers with Eddie Lacy and Starks on his backfield is not going to be able to get some 10-yard runs for first downs when they're third and seven? Well, what does that say about it, Aaron Rodgers? I mean, last game, I don't know if you've seen it, 
two passes to Jordy Nelson. I mean, right off the defenders. I mean, that defender had to hear that ball mm-hmm. right past. His oh ear. my God, I, that was probably and, and that. I mm. mean, that kind of precision that this quarterback has when it comes to his receivers, and the confidence that his receivers are going to catch it that close to the defender. It's that's a video game throw. We were watching the game here in the studio, and. The way it happens, you're you're sitting there and you're like, okay, he's throwing it. It's gonna go behind him. It's gonna go over him. You know, back at the end zone, no big deal, no harm, no foul. And you're watching the ball just kind of travel. I mean, it's travel. a fraction of an inch Amazing. that it's gonna hit the defender's helmet. And literally, I you you were on the down when you said he had to have heard the whistle on it. And that's something you know, we we in Chicago, we feel we don't see it enough from Jay. These guys, that's why this matchup was built up so beautifully. That these two guys, you know. Two of the top tier quarterbacks in the NFL, one looking to become a Super Bowl champion, one looking to get back and cement his legacy. And we're not going to get that this week. But they are going, the Bears still have to go up to Green Bay. They still have to go up there. It's still a division game. The greatest rivalry in football. Mm-hmm. What is it, 127 matchups? 178 now? times. 178 times. And this goes all the way back to Lombardi. Yeah. And, and Papa Bear. Papa Bear, yeah. Papa Bear and Lombardi. I mean, we're talking about the foundation of the NFL. The America's pastime. And there was no such thing as sportsmanship back then. No. It was no it was, you're not going to sit around after the game and, and drink beers and, and, and hug your your opponent. And that's one thing I want to see in more rivalries. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I understand the shaking your hands. I know, you know, but I want the old-fashioned rivalry. I want the smash mouth. I want to be able the to The hockey walk mentality. Off. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then walk off that field. And whatever you guys do in that tunnel. That's Fine. one thing. Yeah. I don't want to see it on the field. If it's a mm-hmm. rivalry like the Chicago Bears and the, and the Packers, mm-hmm. and you know what? I'm going to get criticized for it. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I want to see after the game, I want to see, ha ha, got your ass. Mike Mercado, the Chicago Beat, Bigs Packer Review. Once in a lifetime. Once in a, You thought Rock versus Cena, Rock versus Hogan was something. No, this is one of two really good special shows. It's Bears Packers Week here on the Chicago Beat. It's very cold. Walking down that tunnel, not only do you feel the icy chill of a Green Bay winter night, you also start to hear the emotion. Coming out of the tunnel, hearing all of the people that really dislike us and know know that it goes deep. I was out to having a beer with one of their defensive linemen the night before that game. And he told me, he says, hey, you know, our coach doesn't like you very much. You know, all week long, he said, if you get a shot on that little guy, you, you take it. So he said, you better watch yourself tomorrow. That's a foul. I figured I'd see it coming. Everybody always knew, like, you got to keep your head on a swivel when you go play the Packers. My God, you got to play against Butkus. Butkus has got his eye on you, and you better watch. Because he'll tear your head off, and then he'd think he should be getting an award for doing it. I'll never forget one time sitting with Ray Nitschke. And Ray had these long hands, but they were real gnarled. I said, Ray, why are your hands all like it? And he said, I'm sticking my hands in the Baird's face mask. This game is much more than a single day, a single year. It has that unbelievable sense of of continuation of tradition, series, you name it. I think all games matter, but some games are special. Rock under a blitz, pockets tight, hit by a backer, and down he goes! Some unbelievable players have played in this game, lots of Hall of Famers, Hall of Fame coaches. Brett Farr, straight back in the pocket, out, wants to go He's got him! A man wide open, here it's caught, he's gonna go for the He's gonna go! You play for all the legends and what they stood for. If that don't motivate you, if it doesn't give you goosebumps, nothing will. In all, they've played 183 times. It's more important than it is to them! And between them have 22 NFL championships, five Super Bowl titles, and 48 players in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. For nearly a century, the history of this matchup has been a central part of the history of the NFL. And tonight, the Bears and Packers clash once again at Lambeau, the latest chapter in a story that connects football's past and present. History, tradition, pride, everything that you want to have in life, 
This rivalry is pretty daggone good. How about the cheese? How do you think we got the cheese head? We got cheese factories all over the place over here. Chicago has better cheese and better brats and better beer. The bears. The bears. We take a tremendous amount of pride in Green Bay and when people are critical, we take it personally. Think about if if there was a, a garbage dump and there was a real stinky part to it, the stinkiest part, that would probably be Green Bay. <laughs> it was always playing out that small town Hicks versus the big city slickers, and that was part of the whole deal. I mean, you know, Green Bay to me is what the National Football League is all about. It's a town of 102,000 people. It's got a state that just adores it. And the same thing applies south of Green Bay in Chicago. Those people love those bears. And it's just like two trains running at each other. And when they meet, wham! They're separated by just 220 miles, but about as different as two places that close on the map can get. Tiny Green Bay, a paper mill town in central Wisconsin. And Chicago, the metropolis of the Midwest home to nearly 10 million. If you're in Chicago, you got three or four different major activities going on. In Green Bay, <laughs> that football game with the Packers is the biggest event of the week or month or whatever. They're very, they're very into the Green Bay Packers. There's not a hell of a lot to do up there unless you ice fish. But if football provides common ground, so too, some say, does a sensibility common to both towns. We're a big city, but we're known as the hardworking city. We've got a lot of hardworking people here. You know, we're known for that. I know up in Green Bay it's a small town, but I think they're the same way. A lot of hardworking people, farming people, uh, cheese, whatever they do up there. It's almost like they've accepted the fact that, yeah, we're the underdogs, but we're going to come out the top dogs. Little Green Bay and mighty Chicago. They've been at it for nearly a century, dating back to when Chicago's George Hallis, always on the lookout for teams willing to take on his championship squads, found a willing challenger in Curly Lambeau's Packers. Chicago won eight of the club's first ten meetings, but by the end of the 20s, the Packers had become an improbable NFL power, able to compete with the Bears on even terms. By then, the rivalry was fierce, but off the field, the teams soon actually ended up helping one another. During the Depression, the Packers accepted an IOU from the Bears when Chicago's team couldn't meet its debts. Then in the 40s, Hallis himself played a big role in raising funds for what would become Lambeau Field. The Packers were running out of money in the late 40s, and George Hallis made an appearance to help get more money out of the uh, fans of the Green Bay Packers. And they were able to do that and keep the franchise in Green Bay. But if Papa Bear Hallis did all he could to support the Packers off the field, on the field, he did everything possible to defeat them. We were playing the Bears in Chicago, and uh, you look over and Papa Bear is standing on the 10-yard line, hauling out unbelievables to the officials. Coaches aren't supposed to go past the 20. And I said, Coach, you're out of whack here. You can't be down there and go, shut up, Horning. Paul Horning, of course, could only be quieted by one man and that was Vince Lombardi, who took over the Packers at the end of the 50s and made one of his chief objectives immediately clear. The Chicago game was always a game every year that Coach Lombardi put more focus, more energy in, and he just flat out wanted to beat George Hallis. Today, the rivalry's central characters treat it just as seriously. Looking for us to make that move right away to beat Green Bay. When Lovey got here and told us the first thing he wanted to do was beat Green Bay, that's when I really realized that this is our rival. The second week of Lovey Smith's first season, he had his opportunity at Lambeau. Brian Erlacher comes through, stripped the ball out of their running back's hand, 
Mike Brown picks it up and runs it back. I always think of that play when I think of our rivalry game. That game ball from the Green Bay game will always be in my office. When we come back, more on the history of the Bears and Packers as we approach a Christmas edition of Sunday Night Football. Let me tell you a story. This is a true story. Nobody even knows this story. Back in the early days of Lambeau Field, both the teams dressed in the same locker room. The Packers over here and the Bears are over here. And there's a knock on the door. And Coach Hallis is at the door. But Lombardi says, yes, Coach, can I help you? Is anything wrong? Coach Hallis says, Vince, I want to tell you one thing. You better have your team ready today because we're going to kick your ass. You know what his purpose was? His purpose was to get Vince and take his mind off the game, and he did. It wasn't fun to go up there and play. We knew we wouldn't have any hot water at the hotel. Usually no heat either. And then when you get to the locker room, there's usually a pile of horse crap somewhere in somebody's locker. Usually Ditkus. With at least two meetings a season, it sometimes seems as if the emotion behind Bears-Packers games finds an outlet both on and off the field. One game we lost, I'll never forget this. I'm getting on the bus and there's this lady and she is dressed to the nines. She's quaffed, she has a wrap, she has a scarf around her neck and she's doing, feeling like this at our bus, meaning we choked. And I thought to myself, lady, if you could see yourself and then you realize right then and there just what this game means to those people. I can still remember certain instances with the Bears, how it was. Played a whole game, and it goes down to one play at the end of the game. Here comes the snap. Good snap. The kick is on the right block. The Bears block it. Chester picked it up. Chester's running. Chester's going to score. And the Packers win the game. Holy cow. Chester Marker, we never dreamed it. Unreal. How something like that sticks in your mind. Five years after Markle's memorable play for the Packers, the Bears unveiled William Perry as a new offensive weapon. It happened against their arch rivals on a 1985 installment of Monday Night Football. We started messing around with this thing in practice. I put him in front of Walter to run the lead interference, and he did, and he ran it good. Then I said, okay, if he can run it, we can hand it to him. Bam, and he did that good. First and goal for the Bears for the go-ahead score. Hand off to Perry, crushes the right side of the line. Touchdown! The fridge. You know, when he scored against us, I don't know, that's my fondest memory. Here, look at us. Look at William Perry uh, doing the high five. <laughs> Remember the Monday night game? It was Halloween. The torrential rain. rain. Oh, the star carved the Bears up that night. Yeah. Back to throw. Winds up. He's got a man coming clean from right to left. He is there and he gets in the end zone. It was unbelievable that finally the, the tide had turned. The bear killer, Brett Favre. He slayed him, all right. The 20, 10, 5, and down! My favorite memory of the Bears-Packers game was after Walter Payton died. And the Packers were heavy favorites, and there was just no way the Bears could have won that game. Snap placement made. Oh, it is blocked! Oh, yeah! Bears blocked the kick! People say that Walter Payton's hand came down from heaven and knocked that ball away. It was one of the most magical moments. I'm getting chill bumps right now thinking about that moment. There have also been times when the rivals clashed with everything on the line. Like last winter in the NFC Championship game at Soldier Field. This historic meeting between the NFL's two oldest rivals never has it meant this much. I thought we had a chance. Home field, I thought we had a chance. That whole game, every play was um, like the last play of the game. Fourth down and four. It's ball game on the line. Cheney in the pocket, throws it over the middle. Intercepted! Intercepted, Intercepted by Shield! When those seconds ticked off that clock, we knew we did something special. That we crushed their dreams. And we was finally seeing ours. It is Green Bay all the way to Super Bowl. In sports, you have to realize that you're going to have to go through some tough moments after losses. But I have to say that, that that's probably the toughest one. It's hard to put it into words. 
Tonight, the Green Bay Packers and Chicago Bears meet for the 184th time, resuming a rivalry nearly as old as pro football itself and just about as intense in the 21st century as it was in the days of Hallis and Lombardi. You play for all the great players that play here before you. You don't want to let those guys down. To be able to lead our Chicago Bear team in such a big rivalry game, it's just a privilege, and you know that history could be made again. The Packer Bear game allows you to go out and play your heart out, to give it everything you have. This was the test, this was the challenge, and this was the opportunity. And we are just a few hours away from Bears Packers and Lambeau Field. Doesn't get better than that in the NFL, Big John. You can find all our work at the Chicago Beat. We're going to be talking about it all the time. We're on Twitter at the Chicago Beat. Of course, all season you're going to hear me talk trash to Big John about the Packers and about the Brewers. And you can find Big John at... Facebook.com slash Big John Vic, B-I-G-G-J-O-N-V-I-C. And... Mike, let me tell you something. Eminem this week, cornerback Sam Shields for the Bears makes his first appearance. Or, I'm sorry, for the Packers. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, I see what you, you You're coming down to Chicago and throwing blows, aren't you, huh? Uh, he makes his first appearance of the year. And he is uh, with Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey causing matchup nightmares mm -hmm. for secondaries on the outside. Well, Shields will be needed at full strength tonight. Thankfully, Mike McCarthy said his in his press conference the other day that Shields was held out from practice only as a precaution mm. and is hopeful that he'll be ready to go with no reason at all. Shields cannot play, so he will be on the field. Wow. And so adding insult to injuries. That's huh? right. That's, just that, a little that's just bit. Great. Just, just a little, a little bit. bit. Give me a break here. You know, and I've been telling you, like, obviously, if you've been, if you follow us on Twitter at the Chicago Beater on Facebook, You've been seeing that you've been giving me a hard time about oh, Bears Packers. I mean, you've been absolutely killing me. Oh, you know, of course, it's all—it's nothing but love, but it's, it's been, you know, it's been out there, and it's funny. And, folks, let me give you a little inside secret because Eminem here from the Chicago Beat off the air was telling me just the other day before today's show and before in a couple hours where the Chicago Bears heads up to Lambeau Field, up straight up 94, straight up 43, over the bridge where the Packers – Beat the hell down on the Chicago Bears. One Eminem, Mike McCardo, says to me, you're right. Listen here. That that, that was <laughs> completely taken out of context, okay? I, I'm going to pull a Tiger Woods. I'm going to have to sue you for defamation because this is this is absolutely ridiculous. You cannot be telling my listeners that I'm saying that the beloved Bears are going to lose at Lambeau Field. I mean, we all know Ditka's, Ditka's ghost and energy will go into Josh McCown, and he will throw 45 touchdowns. Hey, let me tell you something, okay? You're going to have to do that double check because... The discount double check? Yeah, because uh, just the other day he says to me, oh, I'm saddened, I'm saddened to have to admit this, that I know the Bears going to get their asses handed to him. Okay, I got and that thinking. was a quote. See, again, you see, I have. there's no evidence in it. He has no... Oh, this wait, is wait, 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 wait. Oh, here comes the cell phone, the tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but on, you know, on that note, all kidding aside, yeah. I don't... I'm as diehard as a Bears fan. I'm as excited as I, I am to be doing this show and excited. As excited as it always is for Bears versus Packers, you have to feel good about the Green Bay Packers. You know, for me, we're, we've been talking about, we talked a little bit about this off air, but for me, the keys to the games are very simple for the Chicago Bears. Okay, Alshon Jeffrey needs to show up because Brandon Marshall will be the target of Dick LeBeau's defense. Yep. It's over. I mean, that's uh, the Bears' offense especially with Jay Culler, have been absolutely taken apart by the Green Bay defense. And it, it's not something that, you know, they struggle and like, okay, they'll, they'll throw 300 yards, but they'll throw an INT and the, it'll be a close. The Bears have struggled, have, have looked bad, have looked Jacksonville Jaguars bad against Green Bay's defense. And Green Bay's defense is not anything to go home about. It's not something that you're going to go cheer about. I don't hear you coming in every week and saying, did you, look, did you see what Clay Matthews did? Did you see what A.J. Hawk did? <laughs> you know, other than Charles Woodson, that defense has a lot of names, but I've never really seen anything that would make me, would make them jump out the screen. Well, I'll tell you what, M.D. Jennings really has to show up in this game, and Morgan mm -hmm. Burnett as well. And obviously Sam Shields, you know, being back on there. And, you know, <laughs> and, I, and I, I still say Casey Hayward and, and Jarrett Bush might see some action as well to help out in, this, in that secondary 
that whole crew in the back in the backfield of the of the Packers has to show up. Mm-hmm. They have to show up against the Chicago Bears because right now the only weapon the Chicago Bears has is a Matt Forte. Yep. And 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 I will tell you, I, I talked to McCarthy. Oh, not to Coach McCarthy. Oh, okay, yeah. Guy named McCarthy. You had everybody else silently ready to go. <laughs> oh, his brother, his brother's barber is that's right. meat guy exactly. who gave him a cigar once. Exactly. <laughs> and they said the main thing that they're going to be looking out for, and you probably know this already because you, you know Forte right now is the main guy on that offensive side. It's going to have to be. You know, it, it's going to matter on the screen pass to Forte. I mean, they're going to have to pass on the ball, uh, uh, you know, out the flat. Mm-hmm. How many yards is he going to get after the catch? That's the key. I, How many tackles is he going to be able to break? I, those are all the points that are going to determine a Bears victory. And there's been times where you, it's almost frustrating because you feel Matt Forte could be even more involved right. into the Bears' offensive game plan. And without a Jay Cutler, the best, the best, and this is the next key for me. And, and this is not not even on the paper. This is off the cuffs a little bit. Is Josh McCowan, and this is every quarterback's bib and Baba, whatever you, whatever analogy you want to use, is the tight end. Let me ask you this. On the Chicago Bears side, with McCowan right now, the QB, mm-hmm. are we going to see maybe a Wildcat offense see, you know, with, with you know, one Matt Forte back there and that's who's going to get off the snap? See, I don't, I don't see Mark Trestman being that cute of a, with his game plan. I feel what you're going to see is a lot of quick passes, quick decisions, uh, precision passing. That was, that's the biggest difference between a Josh McCowan and a Jay Cutler, and especially with a Mark Trestman offense. Everything is designed. Everything is planned. Everything is supposed to be with the flow. Jay Cutler, kind of with one of your little folk heroes up north, has a lot of Brett Favre in him, okay. where it's off the back foot, off you know away from the box, um, different things. You know, gunslinger. I could get into the tightest zone now. That's the biggest difference between I think Aaron Rodgers and Jay Cutler. That pass that Aaron Rodgers threw, that little window that he had. I think there's only maybe one other quarterback that may be able to get there, and that would be like a Drew Brees. But Jay Culler would have made that same exact throw, would have seen the same exact window. Two years ago, you would have seen Charles Woodson take it to the house, in my opinion. Absolutely. And our injury report right now, uh, Brad Jones has a hamstring issue. He's probable for tonight. Sam Shields is going tonight, although he's listed on the injury report as probable with a toe, toe issue. Uh, Ryan Taylor, the tight end, he's uh, uh, probable with a knee James Jones is questionable with with a knee, which I've been told from inside sources. James Jones is going to go tonight. Yeah, sounds like it. Uh, Nick Perry, the outside linebacker, he's doubtful for, with a foot injury. Jermichael Finley, we all know the story with him. He's out, and I think probably for the season, unless mm-hmm. they make the playoffs. But even then, as long as he comes back, I yeah. anything as long as he comes back at some point, that's a win. Absolutely, you know, that's a win. Absolutely, for him. Clay Matthews is out with a broken thumb. So, mm-hmm. um, on, on the Packers side. There's just so many different things on the offensive side. This is what I want to see with the Packers, okay? I want to see a a five-and-a-half average run by the running backs, whether it be Starks or whether it be Lacey. Combined, you want to see those two guys. I need them to go Mm -hmm. five-and-a-half on an average on a run. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's the first down or second down. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're going to see some mix-up of passes. What I I, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of because – I think the Bears can defend the straight out, out on on a sideline pa- mm. on passes on that. I think the Bears can do a good job at that. I don't think the Bears have have the defense up the middle. I think we're going to see a lot of slants. We're going to see a, a little hooking out. Mm. I think maybe a little hooking up up the middle. I think we're going to see a lot of up the middle passes by one Aaron Rodgers to one especially Jordy Nelson. Let your athlete try to make a move and get in the open field. No, I hear you, and you know it kind of brings me to my final one. It's almost a two parter. One of the bright spots of this Bears offense has been the offensive line. You're talking about two rookies on the right side. You're talking about an offensive line that was absolutely terrible this year. And in Green Bay, you guys can appreciate the fact of how it feels absolutely. to have a quarterback that gets sacked a lot. Because yeah. people in Chicago, this is the weird thing. People in Chicago feel Jay Culler is the most sacked quarterback. He he gets rushed. He does. The guy up north, wearing number 12, is among the leaders of sacks and rushes when it comes to contact because of its offensive line. And the man has still found a way to win the Super Bowl. And right. still found a way to go 9-2 and two against this Bears team. And because of that, you got to get pressure on him. And Tim Jennings and Peanut Tillman, who are both supposed to play, both supposed to be healthy. The only scratches, of course, are a Lance Briggs and a Jay Cutler. They need to show up. You want to beat the Green Bay Packers? If I don't watch the game, 
and I look at the, I pick up the newspaper. Uh, then again, I don't know who picks up a newspaper. If I pick up a tablet and I start reading and I look at stats, and if I see Aaron Rodgers, 279, two touchdowns, two INTs, I could assume the Bears won. I could assume the Bears won because if the Bears turn over the ball and if one of those turnovers gets in the end zone, that's a Bears win. But if I go in that same seat, she and I see 300 yards, three touchdowns, it's over. If I see three t- two touchdowns, one interception, it's over. You have to make Aaron Rodgers turn over that ball. You have to make Eddie Lacy put that ball on the ground. You have to make Starks put that ball on which, the ground. Which is not unheard of, by the way, by those two. Yeah. But this they defense have. hasn't This defense hasn't done that. And it's funny, if you look at the Bears, the games that they've won, you know, you, right now the Bears 4-3, and three, third in the division, the Packers 5-2, and two, first in the division. And it's funny, the Bears start off so hot, that's because they were playing weak teams, getting the ball on defense into the end zone. Packers play good teams in the beginning, start off slow, and now they're taking advantage of it. You're seeing it all come together. So as long as if that offensive line keeps Josh McCown from those happy feet, from ghosts that he hears on the back of his blind side, and they could make Aaron Rodgers turn over the ball, maybe Eddie Lacy drops one on the ground, Bears have a chance in this. Other than that, though, it's going to be tough to try to match a Green Bay Packers team rolling on cylinders right now, on all cylinders right I now. I think what you're trying to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the Bears really up in Lambeau Field tonight will have to manufacture their own success tonight. Yeah, It's not going to be handed to them, and nope. it's not going to be easy to earn it. They're going to have to manufacture, and by only doing that is you have to cause turnovers. If you don't cause turnovers, you're going to lose this battle. And that's any Bears. That's better Bears teams. Better Bears teams have lost easier games without turning over the ball. This is a team that needs that. You know, one thing I have not heard you mention, and that's obviously the special teams. One of those special teams people is one, Devin Hester. Devin Hester yeah. What's going on with Devin Hester? I mean, is he going to play a big part in this game today? Can I be honest with you? I feel the NFL has taken Devin Hester out of the league. The game has changed so much now where, first of all, kickoffs, the, what is it, 60% are ending up on the 20-yard uh, yeah, anyway? Yeah. So that takes away one thing, and you know, the wedge is what – people tend to forget Devin Hester is one of the most dangerous guys on open field. But don't forget Devin Hester had one of his longest returns yeah. against yes. the Packers yeah. in, Lambeau, in field. Lambeau Field. And he tends to show up when the, the lights are brightest. And that's another – you know, that's – it's a great point. Usually you see Devin Hester had returned something – returned something to the house. They win that game. I mean, against Minnesota, he needed all 275 yards of punting and kicking to for the Bears to beat the Vikings. Okay? And that's and, – and people are forgetting that. Throughout the whole season, the Bears have never blown. Other than Pittsburgh, sort of, and New York, sort of, the Bears have struggled. Bears have struggled to beat teams. So this team was still trying to put the offense all together. Devin Hester was one of the bright spots, but you've seen the NFL has taken him out of the out of the game with the kickoffs, and people just aren't punting to him. And he's not. He doesn't have the legs anymore to take three or four or five punts in a game anymore. But you see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to blow up that balloon for you a little bit mm-hmm. because when I take that needle and, and I'm you pop, pop it, it, yeah, it's gonna go. Jeez, Louise, and you are <laughs> popping already. You have me over here thinking. Listen, this is exactly what happens. Typical, typical. <laughs> I'm a typical Chicago fan. I get I'm like, well, doom and gloom. We're not gonna think. The oh, and then, the oh, well, baby, well, baby, today we might actually have a chance. You never know. I mean, you know, it's Sunday, any given Monday, I guess. No, um, no, it's 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 gonna be a good game though. I truly believe so. Monday Night Football, Lambeau Field, Chicago Bears, Green Bay Packers. Bears, Packers, the legacy continues. What happens? Well, the obvious happens. The Bears will get beat up and, and beat up pre- pretty bad. And, and I'm not talking about on the scoreboard either. Because oh. they're going to get beat up pretty bad wanting to try and win this game. Mm. I guarantee that. There's going to be possibly some injuries. I hope not. Mm. But I just think that the Bears right now are behind the eight ball. They lose this game. And they're in deep, deep trouble with this division. They've already lost to Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They lose this game. They're behind the eight ball. And now they will have to wait till the very last game of the season. And granted, that <laughs> that's to say that they're going to do well in between this Assuming. game and the, and the last game of the season. Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny. If, if let's say, Jay Culler was healthy. Let's say the Bears were healthy. Both teams were healthy. This would have been a heavyweight matchup. Then both teams have a really weak schedule after this. Absolutely, they're playing really. They're playing the NFC East because you guys still have a few games against the NFCs, and the both teams are gonna would, should rack up wins when it comes to that. December 29th, Sunday night, which should be a Sunday night game. Right now, it's scheduled for twelve noon. Yeah, so we're assuming that if both teams end up playing well, or at least are someone in contention, well, we know the Packers will be in somewhat contention barring any major injury. If the Bears find a way to get back into it, 
December 29th. On December 28th, where do you see the Chicago Bears? Where do you see the Green Bay Packers? I, on the 28th, I mean, I, I will see us in studio, you know, yeah. uh, recording another show. Very nice. An hour special in that case because it'll be the end of the season. Absolutely. Um, in, in, in Soldier Field, again, the Packers win this game. That's They're not going to be pressured to win that game. No. You know, they're going to be pressured to go in there and do well. But the Bears will be more pressured to win that game than they will be winning this game. And see, this game, they have an out. Mm -hmm. Their offense is beat up. Mm -hmm. Their, their, their captain is down. They have to rely on all the co-captains now. Mm -hmm. Because right now, your saving grace, Mr. Cutler, who has a bad record in the playoffs anyway, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah, and I mean, one of the worst, right? for one of the top-tier quarterbacks, he's almost the same thing as Tony Romo. Yeah. Well, that's for a different show. Right. Exactly yeah. right. Um, but I, I see the Bears, I mean, needing to fight for even a wild card spot. Very interesting. See, on the December 28th, while we're recording our show, getting ready to celebrate Bears Packers 2 of the season. I'll be smoking that story. I'm sure you will be. And we'll I, have that first round by. And I will be pretty <laughs> upset about it and doing everything I can to fight you for it. But uh, <laughs> I think you're going to see the Bears at around 8 and 7. They're going to see Detroit at around eight and seven, nine and seven. They're going to see Green Bay at about twelve and twelve and four, maybe already. That's at about right. right. And I think you're going to see both teams one playing for uh, home field advantage in Green Bay, because I think you're going to see New Orleans or Seattle with great records. And, and you bring up a good point. And, I, and then I will take my my you know the pressure back from the Packers because if they are playing for home field advantage, it's a big difference. That's they will be playing for price. Yes. And the Bears will be playing for a playoff spot. I truly believe that that's what we're going to be looking at. I think this week you could almost hear it in Chicago. You can hear it in the sports talk. I mean, between us, I've had a great time today, and you, you know, you can almost feel the okay. Let's just see if they could survive. I think by December 29th, that Sunday night, you're going to be looking at two teams: one trying to do its best to stay out of Seattle, New Orleans, and one doing its best to get to New Orleans or Seattle. And I think you're going to be seeing a team like Detroit, who we haven't talked about today, but Detroit's going to be in it for the long haul. So I think you're going to see a lot of different things, and I'm very excited about it. So your final score prediction? My final score prediction will be 42 to 17. 42 to 17. So you're taking the over and you're taking the points. Yes. Okay. I have it. I'm going to say the Bears win. What? Yeah. What? No, I'm going to say the All Bears right. win. Yeah, I'm, I think Hold the Bears on. are going to win. Here, here, here's the thermometer. Yeah. I think you need to check <laughs> it is cold season. I, I, I need to, uh, you know, you got a fever or something. Maybe I'm just a little excited for the Blackhawks game. I'm just full of machismo and ready to go at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, No, I think the I think the Bears win 28-21. I think Devin Hester makes an impact in the game, changing the field position. I don't think he returns one home. I think Aaron Rodgers turns over the ball. And I think the Packers don't put the pedal to the metal today. You know, I think Aaron Rodgers will throw an interception. One interception. Won't mean a thing. It could happen. I mean, it really could happen. The guy's the guy's a bad man. I tell people this all the time. Aaron Rodgers is wearing 12 in a Bears uniform. The Bears are going to the Super Bowl. I, and I'll tell you what. He throws that interception. You're going to see one pissed off Aaron Rodgers, and that, that's when the points come after that. Yeah, No, it's true. It's going to happen early in the game. There's no way who plays better in the NFL th with a chip in his shoulder than an Aaron Rodgers. That's for sure. Big John, my friend, where can they find you? You can find me at Facebook.com slash Big John Vic, B-I-G-G-J-O-N-V-I-C. And I welcome all of you guys. Come on <laughs> over. Talk your smack because after tonight – I'm going to be all over Facebook. And please. <laughs> please do it. Because you guys have let him all week absolutely destroy your favorite host in Chicago. You've let him by the me way, one. And by the way, your friends have been taking my side. Yeah, they have. What kind of friends are those? I'm you know, like, like, these are the same people calling him <laughs> Paperboy Jay and everything. Uh, this is ridiculous. It's always a, why always me in this damn studios? I hate this place. So with friends like yours, I'm <laughs> no, all set. Well, yeah, with friends <laughs> like mine, who needs enemies? Huh? Yeah, that's something right here. Um up backers yeah. and by the way thank you so much for having no, me on and this has been my pleasure i mean we've been planning this for for a while now and yeah. it's, it's always fun you always have me out when are you ne when's your golf show when's it on next it's on every friday at 4 p.m uh at bigs golf talk b-i-g-g-s golf talk.com it's on fridays saturdays friday at 4 p.m saturdays at 7 a.m on the full gamut radio network and a monday nights at 5 p.m on full gamut radio network as yeah well, so. great stuff i've you know been guest host on it a few times thank you for the plug I appreciate yeah of that. course no it's, it's such a fun show really good guest um 
for somebody like me it's who's golf a talk for golfers. I mean, it's not yeah. about the PGA. It's about the average golfer out there that loves the it's game. It's kind of like what we did today. Uh, you know, people who are listening to the show obviously listen to the Chicago Beat, and we uh, our biggest thing I think. But we, you know, it's it's fun. Like when we're not on the air and we're working. You know, on on some of the other shows, we yeah. we bat we you know we badger each other. We have we know we we make fun of each other. But I think our biggest goal whenever we do these type of badger shows is the key word because we're from <laughs> Wisconsin. Wisconsin yeah, don't yeah. I'm not gonna say Wildcat after losing four <laughs> games. Not even trying to get to a bowl game anymore. Uh, <laughs> no, the um, you know it, it, it's it's. I think what we try to do now is just more. Let's have the conversation. We we love our teams, but fact is, is this is the National Football League. Anybody can win any given Sunday, and these are two highly respect. These are the the original teams of the National Football League, our our cherished sport in this country. And I always find it fascinating to have you know a friend of me come in here and debate me and tell me what's going to happen when these two teams match up. So Big John, I thank you. For coming in, teaching my my listeners a little something about the team up north. You know we don't we don't we don't speak of the we don't. Speak and of the by the way, here. folks, I'm in enemy territory right yes, now. You are. The Packers yes, in Chicago are. right now. Yeah. That's where I'm at. But the Bears are up there in Lambeau See, Field. You guys still the fans still got to make that drive up there tonight. No, That's they it. don't let us. Didn't you hear that? Yeah, there's a new law. If you drive up there and they, they see that you're from <laughs> Chicago, they send you right back. They don't want us colluding. Yeah, <laughs> they they have this weird idea that we're all criminals or something. Which you know most of us we only sent three governors to the you know to. Yeah. The base century, no big deal. They didn't want you uh, uh, politicizing or, or corrupting yeah, our state. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no kidding. All right, for one, one last time, uh, so they can follow you on Twitter? Uh, Facebook.com slash Big John Vic, B I G G J O N V I C. Thank you so much, Mike. No problem. Big John, thank you for coming in, man. Uh, even though you're a Packer fan, you're one of my best friends. I appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you so much. For everybody for listening, thank you guys so much. Secret Reducer Man, who makes sure this is going to get on the air. Don't don't forget, you're going to be able to follow it everywhere. We're going to do it all week. So even game day and after that, if you want to listen to see how smart we sounded or how stupid one of us sounded, most likely Most me. likely him, yeah. <laughs> You could follow us. We're going to make sure that it's up. We're going to make sure it's both on all Twitters. Please enjoy the game. Be safe. Don't give each other too hard of a time unless you're a Bears fan giving it to a Packers fan and then give it to them as hard as you want because Big John has done enough of that for you guys all week long on Facebook. Go Pack Go. Go Big, Pack Go. Big John Big. Go Pack Go. I'm Mike go. Mercado. Go Pack Enjoy go. the game. Bears versus Packers. One. <laughs>